So welcome to the rotation and talk topic. I feel that I should mention that when I was in first year, this topic was my absolute downfall. And consequently, when I first looked back on it to teach it, I was incredibly surprised by how simple it actually was. I hope that I can teach it to you in such a way that you will find it less of a trial uh, than I did the first time around. So in this set of videos, or in this topic, we'll look at how we describe rotation. So which variables we use. So it is rotational motion. So we will look again uh, for the case of rotational motion at the case of constant acceleration. And we'll compare our translational motion, which is everything we've done so far, with rotational motion. So once we've got our motion part of rotational motion sorted, then we'll move on to the work and energy part of rotational motion, followed by torque, and then finally on to the angular momentum. Okay, so rotational motion is a motion topic. So I'll start by defining the difference between what we've done and what we're just about to do. So translational motion uh, is the motion of objects moving on a line. So they're moving from one place to another in space. And that motion, translational motion, is everything that we've done so far. So that includes, for example, moving up and down in a lift, projectile motion, and even uniform circular motion is still a translational motion because although the object is moving in a circle, it's still moving through space. So for example, we have our Earth circling the Sun, which is our standard case that we've seen for uniform circular motion. The translational motion of the Earth about the Sun, so it moving through space around the Sun, is what gives us our seasons. Rotational motion, on the other hand, is the objects turning about an axis, so about themselves. So for example, a basketball being spun on a finger, or the wheel on a stationary bike being spun, or our Earth. So our Earth spins also on its axis, and as it turns out, that axis is slightly tilted. So in that picture, the blue line is the axis of rotation, and we are saying arbitrarily that the Earth is spinning in a counterclockwise direction around its own axis. So the rotational motion of the Earth gives us our day and our night. So the thing about all this to keep in mind is that this is still motion, and we've already looked at motion. So even though we're dealing with rotation about an axis, the concepts and the equations are going to look very, very similar to what you already know from motion. There will be a few small differences, um, mostly in the terms and the terminology that we use. So you'll have to learn a couple of new definitions, but we'll look at those over the next few slides. The best tip that I have read comes from the course textbook from Halliday, Resnick and Walker. And what it says is, if a rotational motion question sounds like a foreign language, translate it back into one dimensional linear motion. So if the question asks for the angular distance, temporarily delete the word angular and see if you can work out how to solve the problem with linear motion. So with what you know from linear motion, and then you can convert it back to use the angular motion equations. So the first thing we'll do is we'll start with a couple of definitions of just how we set up uh, our reference frame and our rotational motion problems. So we have our Earth there uh, turning about its axis. The very first thing that we assume with rotational motion is that we are dealing with a rigid body. So that means that all parts of that body sit together and the body rotates about its axis without changing its shape. So now I'm just going to tilt the Earth to make my image simpler. And we can see the Earth is rotating around this axis and so we call that uh, the rotation axis or the axis of rotation. So that's one of our reference points. Our second reference point, if we imagine that we cut a slice through the center of the Earth and we affix a dead straight line or stick to the, to the rotation axis at this slice, that line is our reference line. And that line rotates with our object. So if we now switch our view and we have a look at that slice from the top view, so top down, so our rotation axis is coming out of the page towards us from the very centre of that circle, and our, our Earth is rotating counterclockwise, and that reference line will rotate with the Earth. So we determine how far the Earth has rotated by, by determining how far that reference line has moved. And that's very much it uh, for how we set up our coordinate system for our rotational motion. 
And that's it for setting up how we describe our system undergoing rotational motion. The next thing that I'd like to look at uh, is the variables that we use to describe rotational motion. So once again, it is motion. So we have terms for position, displacement, velocity, and acceleration. So if we look once again uh, at our top view of a system rotating, in this case, I've got a non-symmetrical system rotating. So we have an oval rotating about its axis of rotation, which is located at the origin of the coordinate system shown. And we have our reference line. So at some initial time, we put our reference line uh, along the horizontal axis. After some time, so we'll say at the final time, our object has rotated through an angle theta, and this motion has described part of a circle. So it's rotated through an arc length, which, uh, which we'll call S. And we know that there is the radius of the arc or the distance to that arc length is R. So these are the variables that we use to describe uh, rotation. So our first linear quantity is the position. We use the term X to describe that and its units are in meters. Our angular position we describe by our angle theta and its units are always radians. And we know from uh, circle geometry that our angle theta, we can write in terms of our arc length and our radius as S divided by R. The second quantity is our displacement. So in our linear motion or our translational motion, our displacement is equal to the change in position. So that's the final position minus the initial position and we use the variable s and our units are meters. Our angular displacement uh, is again is equal to the change in our angular position which is the change in theta which is the final final angular position minus the initial angular position and the units of that are radians. So as an example in this case shown at time t equals zero or at our initial time our initial angular position is zero and our final angular position is pi on 8. So that means that our angular displacement is equal to pi on 8 minus 0, which is pi on 8. The final two quantities are our velocity and our acceleration. So in uh, our translational motion, we have both formulas for both average and instantaneous velocity. Both of those are equal to the change in displacement over the change in time. The equivalent rotational quantity is the average and instantaneous angular velocity. And we've already met uh, the variable that we use for angular velocity, which is omega. And just as uh, in translational motion, the velocity is equal to the change in the displacement, the angular velocity is equal to the change in the angular displacement. And last but not least is our acceleration. So we also, again, we have an average and an instantaneous acceleration. In our translational motion, that's equal to the change in velocity as a function of time. And in our rotational motion, our angular acceleration is equal to the change in our angular velocity as a function of time. So when you're working in rotational motion, uh, the formulas for your average and instantaneous quantities are the same as linear motion. We're just using different variables to describe them.